I'm Nicole. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are who in the New York too. Wow. Wow. I we really bombed that. <laughs> that needs to go to flubs. I really we are the, that up. What are we? The Yahoo and the blah, 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 channel? <laughs> We're not starting over. We are uh, the Yahoo and the Tour channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for joining us. We thank you very, very, very much. Our di little digital family that we have out there. We love you guys um, dearly. And we can't thank you enough for all of your love, for all of your support, for all of you guys hanging out and enjoying the word of Yah with us. We are in the book of Mark and we are having a blast with everything here. We are uh, right where we want to be. And um, there is a lot of drama on the um, Hallelujah Grifters front. And I will be post. I can't actually post a link on this main channel, my our Yahoo and the Torah Two channel, but I will post a um, a link um, on the community post um, once I have a. Basically, it's a, it's a documentary. It's an expose documentary, and we found the the, the we found the the issue yesterday. We found why it was that they were going so hard after us, and it led us to their corporate paperwork. And their corporate paperwork led us to a house that they bought a year ago that was four hundred thousand dollars, and we believe that we are on a a list and a trail of lying, thievery, tax evasion, money laundering, and racketeering. And we say racketeering because this little group of thug people have left a a list and a family list of families that they have come and destroyed. For the last 20 years with people that have tried to expose them and this is an amazing grift it is an amazing time to be alive and for everybody download this coveted pdf please the restored names hallelujah scriptures pdf it is available at yahoo and the torah.net and also we have uh the book of enoch now up there the actual restored names book of enoch and today we will have probably Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy audiobooks, all completely as MP3s that you guys can listen to on the site and you can also download free of charge, right? We are fulfilling the duty of the Hallelujah Scriptures where it says freely given, we must freely give. And so we are having a lot of fun doing this and um, there is a lot of dirt. We would have never ever run across this. We would have never known had we never said anything, these guys would be, and they probably still might be. Um, there is, it is a criminal enterprise, and um, the IRS and the feds would probably definitely love to hear about this. That is not my part. Um, I do not want to crush these people, or I would call the FBI and IRS and give them a huge docket of information that I have on them. But the word of Yah must go on. The thing that everyone, I believe, should understand is that if you order from the Hallelujah Scriptures, the grifters, you are, you are buying a book. They sell books for a profit. If you give them money, they will give you an awesome, awesome book. But that is the only way that you will get that awesome, awesome book. And for everybody that clicks the little donation button and gives them more than that, um, you're, you're financing a criminal operation. And I will prove that to you guys. I will show this to you guys, and I will leave it at that. Gentlemen, how are you furry-headed uh, young men doing? Good. Good. How's everything? Good. You guys got furry heads, and you got some furry, furry. Uh, almost got some beers going. You got a few spatchy spots. You kind of look like, you know, those, those Jewish guys that can't really grow beards. And I'm just saying from my big gnarly beard here, um, it's getting there. It's getting there. But yours is a little curly, so I don't know what to make of this. So how are you guys? Good. good. Everyone good? Yep. You guys have a good day yep. yesterday? You guys ready for the day today? I think so. Okay. Are you, uh, are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. What are you reading out of, Kate? I'm reading out of the Hebrews Bible. Okay. And Jaden is reading out of Sefer. Out of the Sefer. And Eli is reading out of the... NIV. NIV and King. And um, Kate really wants to do a drum roll. So I, let's do our drum roll for our handy dandy split screen. And it's, it's there. We have a day of the week. Oh, and we have the day of the week. Wow, I am really botching this every day. I get so so into this stuff. But I can do this right here, I believe. Okay, we are in month eight of our creator's calendar. That would make us, what is today, guys? 13th. Third is Tuesday, the 13th on our creator's calendar. It's the eighth day on the Gregorian calendar. And it is a third day of the week. And so 
Um, again, thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. And we are about to get this going. Okay, so here we are. The Pharisees and the Pharisees and some of the scribes assembled to him, having come from Jerusalem, and seeing some of his Talmudian eat bread with defiled, that is, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Yehudim do not eat unless they wash their hands thoroughly, holding fast the tradition of the elders. And from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many others which they have received and hold fast. The washing of cups and utensils and copper vessels and couches. Okay. And that's in parentheses in the NIV. Is it in parentheses? Yeah. Okay. So that would be man-made doctrines, right? That is where they added things in that the translators did. Okay. B boys, gentlemen, what do we make of this? Um, just, they like washing their stuff. Yeah, they like washing their stuff. I don't see a problem with washing There's stuff. There's no washing your hands, but they were making it a law. They are making it a Torah command of the people when it is not a Torah command. So what do we have um, in this dirty doghouse that we would clean couches, right? They clean their couches. I don't think I don't think they would like our house. It's, it's not good enough for them. No, uh, a lot of people. They call us jet yeah, house. Most house. people wouldn't like our house. Yeah, if you're not, have issues with our if house. you're not a fan of one dog, you're not gonna like ten dogs. Yeah, definitely, um, for sure. Okay, um, so what do we make of this, guys? And so what did Messiah Yahushua just say here? Well, he said, that "What is this chapter about?" This is about doing traditions. Doing the traditions and how dark your heart is. Is your heart dark or are you a person of Yah? Okay. So he clearly says the Pharisees do not eat unless they wash their hands thoroughly. Right? And we know from when we've read about the Jewish traditions, they actually like would wash their hands with one thing and then wash their hands with another and then like have one cup to wash. It, it's really a ceremony to wash their hands. Is this in the Torah? Anything like this? No. Have we ever been told to wash our hands? The only thing we've been told is to wash ourselves when we are unclean, and these people aren't unclean. Well, they're definitely unclean. However, um, they're, they're unclean like from they, their heart standpoint. Where, where, they're, uh, where they're just eating bread, right, and they're not like outside the camp or something, they're not unclean. Right. You got it. Okay, five. Then the Pharisees and scribes ask him, Why do your Talmudian not walk according to the tradition of the elders? but eat bread with unwashed hands? That's, um, that's a very good question, right? I mean, well, I guess it's not really a good question. We know the answer to it. But they thought it was a very good question, and they, they asked him. And they, this is the weird thing is they did not understand this. They've been so steeped in doctrines of men inside their Talmudic Jewish traditions of all of this stuff, they didn't even know. They asked him, like, why do you guys not, um, why are they not washing their hands like this? Why are they eating with unwashed hands? Messiah Yahushua says, and he answering, he answering said to them, did Yesi Yahu Nabai concerning you hypocrites? As it has been written, this people respect me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Okay, what, what does he mean by this, guys? He's saying that they are praising him with their mouths, but they don't mean it. What they mean inside, they're just babbling to appease him at the moment. They're just babbling to basically get him off their backs. When we walk into man-made doctrines, when we start obeying man-made doctrines, when we start worshiping on a Sunday, when we start eating unclean foods, when we start doing all of this stuff, we're, and then we say, oh, praise God, God loves us, God bless you, all of this kind of stuff, right? You're, and, you know, oh, praise God. How are you praising Elohim Most High when you are not doing what he wants, right? These people, and, and if you look at any religion, say, for instance, the Christian religion, right? They sit there and they will get in there and they will lift their hands up in the, in the air and they will sing uh, praise and worship and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But when you ask them about the commandments, they say that it doesn't matter to them. And so this is exactly what it's saying right here. These people respect me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Seven, and in vain do they worship me, teaching as teachings the commands of men, forsaking the command of Elohim. You hold fast the tradition of men, washing of pots and cups and many other like matters, right? He says it clearly. This is a traditions of men thing, all of this. And the Jews of today, this is why they reject Messiah Yahushua, right? Because this is talking to them. They still do this. They wash their pots and cups and have all this crazy stuff. They wear white tzitzits and they, they wear their penguin gear and all this other stuff that they have. And it's not biblical. It's not in the Torah. Nine. And he said to them, well, do you put aside the command of Elohim in order to guard your tradition? For Moshe said, 
respect your father and mother. And he who puts curses, he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is Corbin, that is a gift, you let him do not at all for his father or his mother, okay? Nullifying the word of Elohim through your tradition, which you have handed down and many such like you do. Okay, so clearly he is saying what? That they can do they say they can do whatever they want to their mother and father as long as it blesses them. Right. He's getting yet another example. And this is you know, this is um this is basically quoting, you know, this is a, another story out of Matthew. It's almost the exact same story, but just a little bit different, right? And he's 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 axing and murdering the traditions of men. That is what he is doing and and Nobody gets this, and that's that. I guess that's the kind of spooky thing is that people don't get it. They're like, Why aren't you washing your hands like the traditions of our fathers? Because the traditions of the fathers are evil. 14. And calling the crowd to him, he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand. There is no matter that enters a man from outside which is able to defile him, but it is what comes out of him that defiles the man. Okay, again, this is the Christian get out of eating unclean foods or get out of eating food that is unclean. This is what they want to do, right? This is what they say. Well, listen, Jason, it's not what goes into a man that pollutes them or defiles them. It's what comes out of him that defiles him. Okay. Well, why don't you try to drink a, um, why don't you try to drink some Viper venom, right? Why don't you, Clorox. yeah, why don't you try to drink some Clorox? I mean, if, it, if, if Clorox isn't going to defile you, I mean, if, that, if your thinking is that you can stick a pig in your mouth and it doesn't defile you, then stick Clorox in your mouth, right? That's the same concept. If you, most people are all that, it's not like that, Jason. The pig has been made clean. No, it hasn't. Never has it been made clean. It's still unclean food. We should not be touching that. It should not be, it's an abomination, right? This chapter is not about Messiah Yahushua clean pig. <laughs> I just want to make it clear because we go over this and, it, it never, it never ends. It just happens. So 16, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he went from the crowd into a house, his Talmudian asked him concerning the parable. And he said to them, are you also without understanding? Do you not pursue the, perceive that whatever enters a man from outside is unable to defile him? Because it does not enter in his heart, but his stomach and is cast out in the sewer, thus purging all the foods. Again, this is the Christian conundrum. They're like, well, well, Jason, it just says it right here. Um, I, it will go through my stomach and be purged out the back yeah. through, through all of this. I'll see the NIV. Yeah, the NIV, where does it in go? In parentheses. Oh, yeah. The NIV in parentheses. Take a look at this, this lie, guys. Look at this. It says, in saying this, Jesus declared all foods cling. <laughs> and this is, um, this is a problem with the translators, right? This is in parentheses. Right. If you look in the NIV, it is in parentheses. All food has not been made clean. These are all lies, right? These are these are all lies from Hasatan. And um, if you really, like I said, if you really think that all food has been made clean, go 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 eat a poisonous rattlesnake and see what happens. See what goes down. Okay, and see if it casts out in your stomach and goes out in the draught and purging the food to see it purge your life. Twenty. And he said, "What comes out of what comes out of a man that defiles a man." And so that it leads on to this. What does he mean by this, gentlemen? He's not, he's not talking about like being unclean. He's talking about being evil. Yeah. Rude, crude jokes, evil speak, um, attacking people, right? Anything like this. Any kind of evil speak, any kind of evilness that we are doing. Once we speak, we can't unclang the bell, right? It's, it's audible. It can go from not being evil in your mind where you have an evil thought and you need to rebuke that evil thought and then you can decide to crack the joke and I will be the absolute first to put myself on the chopping block because it's easy to get into guys club, right? It's easy to find a joke or for, you know, the Christians will, will be laughing at us or something and we'll go, ha, shut your pork hole, right? And that sounds evil, but I mean, that's, that's it's, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's things we should not say. Um, in that way. And so it is what we develop in our mind that we bring off across our tongue that brings it to audio fruition 
to where other people hear it. And once they hear it, it goes into their mind, right? That joke, the evilness, whatever it is you just said has now been brought on everyone else. And although it may be funny, although you may get a few laughs out of it, and that's just one example of how we can be evil in this and we're not supposed to, we're supposed to be holy. And so when you guys or anyone out there, if you guys think that you don't know if you're saying something evil, just envision Messiah Yahushua sitting next to you as you carry on your conversation. Would you say this with Messiah Yahushua sitting right next to you? Is this the way Yah wants us to be speaking? Is this enhancing the kingdom? Is it building people up or is it destroying them? And that's, that's, what, it is. that's what we got to figure out. Okay, 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil reasonings, adulteries, whorings, murders, thefts, greedy desires, wickedness, deceit, indecency, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All this wickedness comes from within and defile a man. So he went on and he, he explains it to us, right? All of this stuff, it's, it's, this is what is evil, right? And the pig eating Christians will say, no, no, that has, this isn't what it is. It's about food being made cling. And you'll show them scriptures and they do not care. They do not have eyes to see. 24. And rising up from there, he went to the borders of Zor and Zidon and entered into a house. He wanted no one to know it, but it was impossible to be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him and she came and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Yamanite, a Syrophoenician by birth. And she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And Yahushua said to her, let the children be satisfied first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. But she answering said to him, yes, Adonai, for even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. And he said to her, because of this word, go, the demon has gone out of your daughter. Okay, we've gone over this before, but I guess if anyone has not ever heard this, what is this saying, gentlemen? It's saying that these people were considered goyim. These people were considered dogs. Who are who is considered a goyim? Anyone outside of the Jewish religion. Right. Okay. And so basically, yeah, the was basically testing her to see what she would do. Yeah, absolutely. Instead of her, him just healing her, his daughter. He said, hey, you know what? And, and, and we can go back to where Messiah Yahushua says, I have come for the lost sheep of the house of Yashrael. And that is what he came there for. First of all, because those people, the people of Yah were kind of in covenant, right? They were kind of doing their stuff, but they had been taken over by all these religious sects and had been, um, it had just been manipulated. And so he is, he basically said, because the way the Jews believe that Anyone outside of the Jewish religion are dogs, are goyim. They can be spit on. They can be kicked. They, they can be stolen from according to their own doctrine. If you read the Judaism Jewish doctrine, it is incredibly evil. The things that they will allow other Jews to do to people who are not Jews is unbelievable. And you would be shocked at the level of evil that is. And that is why when people are like, oh, you're just a Jew, Jason. Well, a Jew would not be telling you about Messiah Yahushua at all. You could say, well, maybe it's a Messianic Jew. You do not want to be a Jew. If you say Jew, you're representing one single tribe out of the tribe of Yashrael. There's 11 other people there. And so, you know, 11 other tribes. I mean, you don't want to just be, why would you pick just Yahuda? You can be of any tribe that you want to be when that time comes and but there's requirements for that. And the requirement is that you must keep the law, statutes, and commands of our creator. So he goes out and he says, basically, you, you know, you can't do it. You're a dog, essentially, is what he said. And by him testing her, she's like, she says, even the dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. Now, is she, is she correct? Do we know of dogs eating the crumbs under the table? I don't know. I feel, yeah, like, they that eat, I feel like they eat the meals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they sit up in the chair and eat our food. They don't eat the crumbs. <laughs> These things are lit, alive. Okay, um, let's go. And having come into her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. And again, going out from the borders of Zor and Zidon, he came to the Sea of Galil through the midst of the borders of Decapolis. And they brought to him one who was deaf and spoke with difficulty and they begged him to lay his hand upon him. And taking him away from the crowd, he put his fingers in his ears. And having spit, he touched the t his tongue. 
What did that? What does that look like to you guys? What is that? What is that? How did? How did that go down? Does he just put his fingers in his ears and spit on the ground, or what? What are we dealing with? Or did he spit on the guy? Where did he? he where did he spit? He. I don't know. And having spit, maybe he just he put his he put his fingers in his ears. So I maybe he just uh, maybe he need to clear his mouth. Um, maybe I don't. I don't know. Um, you know, we know of other accounts where he will spit on the ground and take dust and make it into clay. And he put that on people's eyes before. So I don't know. Maybe he like spit on his finger and then touched his tongue? I don't know. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. Yeah, I don't know. I, this, is, this is an amazing thing. Can you imagine seeing that? First, he, he, like, he, he, he puts his fingers in his ears. It says in his ears, not on his ears. So he, like, he, uh, he like, plugged his ears or something, spit. And then he comes out and he touches the guy's tongue. And um, looking up at the Shimaim. He sighed and said to him, Ephata, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were open and the binding of his tongue was loosed and he was speaking plainly. And he ordered them that they should say it to no one. But the more he ordered them, the more they published it. And they were immeasurably astonished, saying, He has done all well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Wow, hey, that's a superhero, right? Yeah. Is that a? Is that our? This is the king, right? This is our king, that is coming back to us. This is the king in his early infancy, back to, at least that we know of, in human form, and this is a man of wonder. This is a man of power. This is a man of all respect that is due to him, and it is by his blood and by his sacrifice that we have a shot at this, my friends. If we did not have Messiah Yahushua. And we were in this day and age, and we do not have a Levitical priesthood, and no way to atone for our sins, we would be walking a damned road. When I say a damned road, I'm not swearing. I'm just saying that it, the road that we would be on, is it, is it gone? It's, it's a, a road to death. It's a road to spiritual death. And it is by his blood that we can be saved. And it is by calling upon the name of Messiah Yahushua and the faith that he will be our king and the faith that he is the son of the most high and that he is the one who will be leading us and he will be with us. And so there is reason to love our Messiah. There is reason to respect our Messiah. There is a reason that we need to bow to our Messiah and give him obeisance because he has delivered everything for us and it is by his stripes that we are healed. There is no greater gift to mankind beside the Torah than the son of the creator's life to atone for our sins. I'm going to leave it at that. Anything else? It's time to on Spanish. That was pretty dramatic at the end, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if you didn't look like you were about to talk. Uh, yeah, you threw out in Spanish. Um, and uh, yeah, but it won't be live. It won't be any of that. It will be on Yahoo and the Torah 2. And we will be there and we will be with you guys. And we actually set up Yahoo and the Torah 3 so that when we get two band we will go to three so anyway that is it thank you guys very very much much love to our little family out there we love you guys why are you why why are you smiling at me nicole why are you laughing why is why, is, why do i still shock my family i don't know but i try not to all right everybody much love to you out there i am out and so are we all right, all right. So